How's the lockdown been for everyone, uh, Nilesh? Uh, How's it been business-wise and otherwise for the whole community as such? How is it affected? How is it? Yeah, it was challenging. It was challenging. Mm -hmm. Uh, In terms of uh, generally, we have members who fall in the category of uh, small-scale industry. Oh, yes. So, yes. and But yes, for a few, uh, it was an opportunity, especially those who are into... Uh, it's a food business. Right. So yeah. it, it was an opportunity for them. Okay. Uh, many members shifted their business. Yeah. Uh, along with uh, Bishop House here in uh, Wasai, we took an initiative uh, to find out uh, those who are affected from this pandemic, those who yeah. lost their job, uh, okay. those who uh, lost their business. I mean, uh, such affected people. Okay. About uh, 550 people participated in that survey. Right. We tried to reach uh, each and every member of uh, those participants. And yeah. uh, many of them uh, were offered a small-time job wherever possible. Some of them joined, but by the time, I mean, some of them already got jobs somewhere else or they thought of uh, shifting to other area. Yeah. Uh, but yes, overall, overall, it was uh, very challenging, I would say. Very challenging. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Because I've been hearing a lot, I've been getting a lot of phone calls from people yes. uh, talking of how badly they've been affected. And it's very sad. It's very sad. You know, I, I really didn't imagine that it had hit people so badly. Yes. Uh, people are taking jobs at any any kind of salary. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Just, just want to survive. True. Yeah. In, in Vasai, sir. Now I'm Haman D'Souza. Good evening and welcome. How about, sir? Good, good evening. Good evening. Yes. Nice to see you, sir. Nice to be here. In Vasai, we have this community uh, where most of us Young child is working abroad. Just before yeah. they had to leave their jobs, most of them were shippies. Yeah. Back home without a job, some new uh, startups in the group. So parish-wise, we have almost 27 to 30 parishes in Vasai. Right. 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 So these uh, these people who uh, were suffering from loss of job or they were not sure about what to do for the next year because. And they they were all confused because they had to change. Many of them tried to change their uh, work uh, profile. And in that, we tried helping them out uh, to get connected to people who could uh, help us in giving a temporary job till the situation normalizes. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Then uh, we had uh, one panel discussion on creating awareness of basic laws. So we yeah. had uh, Advocate George and Advocate uh, Dhanraj Vanjari, who okay. was a uh, retired, uh, I mean, who is a retired assistant commissioner of police uh, from Mumbai. Then uh, uh, an innovative talk by Emerald Sequera uh, from becoming a property developer. Uh, yeah. becoming a property developer from a landowner. So we, here in Vasai, uh, 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 the original people of Vasai, they have got lands, but they are not aware how to uh, develop it and then uh, become a builder. Right. So we had a, a talk on that. Then we had uh, uh, Yogesh Bambardekar. He is a general manager in uh, uh, National Stock Exchange, Mumbai. Yeah. Uh, emerging investment opportunities and precautions. Okay. <clears throat> uh, then last we had Dr. Srinivasan, who is okay. a wellness mentor associated with uh, Wokart at the moment. Right. And he spoke to us on uh, health as well. Wonderful. <clears throat> so more than 500 guests, uh, apart from our members, uh, part- registered and participated in this uh, webinar. Okay. 
in in uh, which one the last one is it uh, no overall overall, overall. This, way. Uh, this webinars were open to uh, everyone so right uh, not restricting all only to members no that's good that's so good yeah then uh, uh, as an innovative concept uh, we had virtual site visits before that we had some physical visits to our uh, members uh, uh, premises their facilities their offices wherein we get to know uh, more about them okay. but uh, here we had virtual site visit i mean uh, this lockdown uh, made it possible for everyone to attend this uh, site visits and know yeah. uh, the members uh, better right it started with the uh, dina satam uh, she is into consulting services and expert clean services that is home cleaning and car cleaning then we had salome gonzalez uh, he runs a tender and spices food business then so we had clevis tuscano who is the president of indo baltic chamber of commerce and industry operating from estonia and europe so uh, first 45 minutes he explained about his services yeah uh, which he currently offers in estonia and next 45 minutes it was a free ride for everyone online uh, the city center of estonia oh yeah lovely wonderful yeah then we had uh, julian sequera uh, from cut copy paste they are into laser cutting yeah then we had samson gomes who is into uh, safety steel door yeah and uh, then last we had ben sequera uh, sequera mm-hmm. brothers they are very well known uh, uh wooden artists uh, mm-hmm. their uh, uh wooden i mean uh, art yes and that goes to europe and uh, even african and even uh, many churches here in india have got their uh, uh what do you call statues created out of uh, wooden oh. that's in vasai isn't it yes yes correct i've seen that i've seen that okay all right i uh, Uh, many many years back uh, i remember you, you you have visited this place or how you see i used to come there quite often to see uh, brother tony paul at the anand ashram <laughs> oh okay okay, okay. you have heard of the anand ashram yes 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 uh, yeah so on the way yeah correct uh, so at the time of its inception i've been involved uh, right. that's about 30 35 years 30 years back i've i've known him from that time and we've been good friends so at every stage i i used to take my car and take blankets over there get my round table members involved get the rotary members involved uh, take so them over the there and uh, in that way got uh, you know i was i i, I was there at its uh, little gradual stages of growth and i also in that particular period saw vasai also growing you know yeah right from Very barren good. from barren place places to buildings coming up Yeah, yeah. From crematorium, suddenly the crematorium is gone, and <laughs> people don't know that that was a you know where they burn dead bodies and buildings yeah. have come up, petrol pumps have come up. It's absolutely. it's changed so absolutely. much. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. In fact, there was a cooperator there many years back. I'm still trying to get his name. Peter, I think. Peter, who took me to all the Vasai churches. Okay. All the churches, the old churches, and showed me each of the churches. Then he took me to the fort. and showed me where those altars were taken from there yeah, yeah. and right. taken to the fort i was fascinated it is great to know that uh, you have some association with vasai i love history yeah. uh, nilesh i love yeah. history so all right something i just enjoy getting involved in very nice uh so we have uh, 38 participants uh, 39 now and every uh, by second or minute uh, it keeps on increasing yeah it's exactly 5 pm yeah uh, if you allow us uh, we can go ahead and start the session do you want to wait or do you want to start i don't know you you go according to your protocol all right so maybe a minute or so uh, will uh, will start sure sure our harman disuza will uh, take the lead sure yeah <clears throat> uh besti by any chance you are here is colin there colin is come yes harman i'm very much here 
Hi. Yeah. So, Colin, you have to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, good evening. Good evening to you. Yes, yes. Colin uh, Fonseca as well as Colin Sikwara. This is Colin Vera here. Hi. Not Colin Fonseca. Good evening to you, Mr. Fonseca. Uh, I need nice to, to have my Fonseca around. Background, just to give me a second. Thank you. No, 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 not at all. Don't worry. Uh, good evening to you, Mr. Robert Clements as well. Good evening. Good evening. I like your background. <laughs> Thank you, sir. So, Bestie uh, is not here with us. Uh, Colin? Yes, sir. You are all set, right, Colin? Yeah, uh, I am, sir. You need to you tell me to... which Colin you are speaking with. No, huh? Colin, Colin Sequeira. Sorry, sorry, right. Mr. Fonseca. Sorry, sorry for this uh, error. I, I have <clears> texted you, Mr. Fonseca, that this is Colin Sequeira here in the morning today. Yes, yeah, so Colin, you are set for taking over uh, Besky's role, correct? Yeah, I can do that. Just give me a second. Can we mute everybody? Because there are a few people who are still on. Uh, uh, audio is still on. Yeah, I think Samson is taking care of them. No, I have been texting them privately, but still they are not muting themselves. It's okay. Now uh, we will mute them all. Today we have in our midst a wonderful personality, Mr. Robert Clements. Colin, Colin, I will. Uh, we will come to it. We will. Uh, we have, we'll just start have our prayers, and I'll come to you. Uh, yes, Sarman sir, I think uh, uh, it's good. Okay. Good time. Good yeah, time to go. Start. Yeah. So good evening, everyone, and a warm welcome to all of you. Thank you for joining us. Welcome. <clears throat> A special welcome to our honorable speaker, Sir Robert Clemens. But before we commence the proceedings, a gentle request to all of you to keep your surroundings on silent mode and then move to a better internet zone. So welcome once again for the 17th virtual online knowledge sharing session of the DCBA. We conducted our first on 8th April 2020. BCBA Manje Eka Saroli Sa Pravas, Christian Udjojok Ani Vavsai Kansa, Eka Sopna Sa, Uplab the Sausadana Sa Vapor Karun, Apla Samudaya Sati Uttojakta Kaushala Tayar Karane Ani Ekmakanchi Vad Karane, Parada Shakta, Vachan Badata, Utkushtata Ani Vishwas Yatatwano. We are delighted to inform you that BCBA, an initiative of Basin Christian Foundation, is the largest association of Christian business fraternity in English in Vasai, working for creating self-employment opportunities within Vasai Vidar region. Now, let me tell you the flow of today's meeting. In short, we will start with our prayers, followed by BCB journey in short, uh, then a brief participant's introduction by Nilesh. After that, Speaker's introduction by Colin, sir. Then our chief guest and speaker will guide us today in a session of speak well, write well, and build a great business. We will take a question answer session if the time permits. And if you have questions for the speaker, uh, please type it in the chat and send. We will take it one by one after the session. With this, I request Nilesh, sir. Display the prayer on the screen. Robert, sir, normally uh, we have this prayer in Marathi, but today, as a special gesture to welcome you, we are going to take this prayer in English. Thank you. Thank you. Let us pray. Our loving Father, we, the Christian business community of Vasai, thank Thee for bringing us together under Basin Christian Business Association. 
shower us all founder members and working committee with your blessings to have the correct foresight and face all the hurdles while we guide and inspire all our members to the right path oh lord jesus we pray that all our members do business unitedly and create opportunities and help each other grow in christian values we ask your grace upon us that we grow spiritually as we prosper in our businesses oh holy spirit let us succeed and be examples of inspiration to our new generation we pray that basin and basin christian business association members prosper in this business and you he amcha swargiya bapa tujhe naav pavitra manle jao tujhe rajy ho tashe swarga tashe prithvari tujhe icche pramane ho amchi daros chi bhakar tu amas de jase ami ami amcha prat karnarane shama karto tashe tu hi amcha pradanchi shama आम्हाला महत् पुढे देऊ नकोस पण वाईटापासून आम्हाला सोडव आम्ही निलेश सर आय रिक्वेस्ट टू टू टेक ओव्हर अँड गो थ्रू द बीसीबी जर्नी इन शॉर्ट जस्ट इन हाफ मिनिट वी फॉर्म अँड कमेन्स आर वर्किंग समवेअर इन सप्टेंबर टू थाउजंड सिक्सटीन दॅट बीन रजिस्टर्ड फॉर चॅरिटेबल पर्पज अँड सोसायटी रजिस्ट्रेशन ऍक्ट the objective is to unite christian business persons and to create possibilities of self employment for the society as a whole uh, we have monthly networking meetings so far we have completed 55 such meetings currently we have a strength of 300 plus registered members and registration is also uh, possible online at bcba.co.in we have webinars member presentations opportunities for stalls discounts and sense of belonging on becoming a part of bcb just to give you a brief background on today's participants overall we had 115 registrations out of this as you can see on the screen uh, 21 person constitute about the 24 participants who are into business 23 participants uh that constitutes 20% uh, they are uh, professionals uh 14 participants uh that constitutes 12% they are into teaching professions uh teaching or professor a uh, teacher or professors and 47% of participants uh 54 in numbers they are employed unemployed retired housemakers students etc Thank you, Nilesh sir. Thank you so much. I request Colin Sikvera to introduce today's honourable speaker. Colin, over to you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Right. Day. from a daily call to dubai the morning star and in the statesman in kolkata the kashmir times in kashmir to the trinity mirror in chennai mumbai cars have read his column in the times of india asian age free press journal lakpur or the narrations sakal times pune the andaman chronicle this dbs daily column after the death of bedram contractor he also has a corner indian kar bob and an affectionately is the only indian column was articles appear days uh colin there are a lot of disturbances colin there are a lot of disturbances uh, if at all possible can you can i take one more second. one second. how is it how is it clear yes sir yes, yes. yes. much better much better colin sequera yeah one second one second um 
Should, should I get back or should I start from there itself? Uh, uh, no, I think, yes, you can continue from here. Uh, beginning, because if you are not clear, then uh, either Nilesh sir can uh, take it over or I'll just... I, I, I was actually put uh, the earphones okay. and I thought that would do a better job. No, it's okay. I will take over. Don't worry. Let's uh, complete the thing because you are totally, uh, your voice is cracking. Mr. Robert Clemens, now... Oh, just cracking? No. Uh, 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 Collins, your voice is Let me take over. Yes, Harman, sir, please go ahead. Yes, yes. Nilesh, uh, yes, I'm clear to you? Yes. Sir, Robert Clements is a newspaper columnist and writes a daily column which has graced the pages of over 60 newspapers and magazines from a daily column in Khalish Times Dubai, the Morning Star, London, and nearly every state of India. From the statesmen in Calcutta, to the Kashmir Times in Kashmir, to the Trinity Mirror in Chennai. Mumbaikers have read his column in the Times of India, Asian Age, Free Press Journal, Lok Satta, Nagpur, Aurangabad, Nasik, Sakal Times, Pune, Andaman Chronicle, and in the Afternoon Dispatch and Courier. When his column, Bob's Banter, took over, BGB's daily column after the death of Behram Contractor. He also has a column in the Examiner, Indian Currents, Teenager Magazines. Bob, as he is popularly known, is the only Indian columnist whose articles appear daily in Bangladesh's most popular newspaper, The Independent, and also in the Pakistan Observer, Pakistan. His column is also translated into Hindi, Urdu, and Punjabi every day and published in the Punjabi Kesri, Punjab, the Hind Samachar into Urdu, and Jagbhani into Punjabi. He has a daily estimated readership of over 6 million. He is on the board of Nagindas Khandarwala College, Malad, and was also vice president of the Bible Society of India. He is also the author of Dare, where he writes about how he built three businesses from scratch, owned four cars before he was 30 years old, and also a four-bedroom house in the city, all before he hit the age of 30. Today, Robert Sir Clements conducts an online class, the Bob's Banter Writers and Speakers course, which has already in four months produced 100 writers. His training has produced a TV anchor for Bloomberg TV. Bob is married to Dr. Lata Leah Clements, the honorary anesthetist at Holy Spirit Hospital, Andheri. Sir, we are honored to have you with us among us today. We are really honored. Thank you so much for coming and joining us. Please welcome <laughs> Dr. Uh, Sir Robert sir. Clements. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Herman. Thank you so much for introducing me and taking over. Uh, when you called me doctor, my wife nearly jumped up to take over the speech. And I had to tell her that, you know, once in a way, a husband uh, takes over the mic. But thank you so much. I miss, I miss Bestie. Bestie was supposed to, I believe, to introduce me. And uh, she was part of my writer's course last year. So uh, anyway, let's carry on with it. And uh, it's a joy for me to be uh, talking to this Christian business group in Wasai today. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's an honor and privilege that uh, you have given me. Thank you. Below my house, there are two BMWs and sometimes posh and costly cars. They're parked over there. No, they don't belong to me. They belong to my neighbor, who we call Mamaji. This man came to the city and slept on the footpaths, built a business. He's been my neighbor for well over 30 years. And since I don't want to do a case study on Bill Gates or the Ambani's, because I don't know them as well as I know Mamaji, I thought that taking somebody closer home would be more relevant. So I'm going to put Mamaji, who we are, Ma, or Mama, as we call him, as a case study. Remember, he came, slept on footpaths, has 
three or four houses now in some of the posh areas, owns two, three BMWs and drives like a king. How did he build a business successfully? Like I said, he did not come to the city with money to invest. So I watched him in three areas of his life, which involved me and our neighbors. One is when he started the RA Walkers Club. The second is when he took our building and uh, we went for building repairs. And the third is when he's been having these Navaratri celebrations, which he's been organizing for the last 30 years. And he's been organizing it for nearly 1,000 people in our society. It's made up of 22 buildings. And like I said, for the last 30 years. What do they all have in common? What did this man who slept on footpaths, who built such a grand business, what did his, all his uh, events have in common? What he had in common was an idea. What he was able to do was to sell that idea to the rest of the people. Now in the Walker's Club, he sold the idea of being physically fit. He's got a huge lot of people. They all, you, you just got to walk into Hare Milk Colony and you'll find everybody shouting, good morning, mama, good morning, mama. It's as if the, you know, the, the mama owns the park and not the uh, milk people over there. What did he sell to them? He tried to get me also into this uh, walkers thing. He sold me the idea of being physically fit. He didn't sell me, sell me the idea of getting so, up at 6.32 in the morning and walking with him. He sold the idea of being physically fit. What did he do? He had learned the art of communication. Yes, he had persistence and determination. Yes, he had a dream and an idea. But he knew how well to sell that idea. I remember when he sold the idea of repairing the building. I was part of it. The push, the way he went about it was beyond anything I've seen. To be able to get everybody involved in repairing a building which goes into nearly a crore <clears throat> and which takes away a lot of people's life savings, especially when they are nearly retired like me, is not easy. But he was able to do it. And he was able to do not just the painting, but he was able to do the complete repairing, projecting to them of how beautiful the building would look at the end of it, completely done. An idea which he was able to communicate with the people. Also the Navaratri celebrations. How well, how well he was able to, he is able to get year after year after, except last year because of the pandemic. But otherwise every year, get them all into the playground, get them all dancing, the lights and everybody, Hindus, Muslims, Christians, everybody, all together. What was the idea? The idea of fellowship. Remember, he slept on the footpaths. And I'll give you another small hint. He's only a fourth standard pass. He doesn't know how to speak English. He speaks English to me because he makes an effort. But what about you and me? Do you still feel that you can only build a business with money? I told you he built a business and he's doing very well for himself. So do you still feel that you can build a business for money? Well, you, can, you only have to look at Anil Ambani, Ambani to see how you can destroy a business even with money. Today, as you look around at the businesses which have succeed, succeeded, at the startups, you will realize this is the age of ideas, right? Even so many of y'all who have lost your jobs during this pandemic, the way to get out of it is to know that there are new areas and avenues which are opening up, even something like Zoom, which has opened up, which imagine ever before, Having 17, 17, isn't it the latest? 17 uh, webinars which you had? Yes, sir, correct. 17, this, this 17, 17 
17 webinars. You can also call people from who have left Versailles and gone to Australia, who have left Versailles and gone to America. Call them on, all and take, them, take part in the webinar. Ideas. And ideas is the thing of today. Bolster yourself and know it is not the end of the world. Yes, jobs have gone. But with ideas which originate in the head will remain in your head, okay? The same idea which originates in your head, unfortunately will remain in your head unless it is communicated well to others. And today that's what I want to talk about. Building a successful business through writing and speaking effectively. What is writing and speaking? We're not talking of English writing and speaking. We're talking of writing and speaking in any language. We're talking of writing and speaking effectively. I've got an idea. There must be millions of imaginary billionaires in the world with brilliant ideas that remain ideas in their head because they could not speak and write it better and present their ideas to venture capitalists and to their customers. Isn't it? So many brilliant people are there. Oh, we've got the best idea. We can, we can revolutionize the world. Imagine if there's somebody who's got a solution for COVID-19, which maybe, you know, it's, it like, could be like a cough syrup and it could just with one, one gulp, you could get rid of the uh, virus, but he doesn't know how to put it across to people. And where does that idea remain? And where does the whole of COVID-19 remain? unsolved and that poor man will die a pauper. All we need to do is to be able to learn to communicate, to be able to write well and speak well and get our ideas across to the rest of the world. How do I communicate better? Well, I don't want to bring the writers and speakers course, uh, which I run every month, but in that writers and speakers course, uh, which are, we, have, we have now produced 125 uh, successful writers, I teach them what I call the WPC method. What is the WPC method? Now people tell me, Bob, you know, you're a newspaper columnist. You can practice improving your style every day. Where do we practice? You can uh, practice in a newspaper and then next day you can write a better column and a better column. Where do we practice? I thought about this for some time. I thought about people who say that, you know, we want to write, but we don't know where to write. We want to, we, we have the talent to write, but we can't practice anyway. And I thought about this for quite some time and realized that whether we are writing or speaking, what are we using? I want a little bit of interaction from you all. What are we using, whether we are writing or speaking? Anybody who can un unmute the uh, uh, mics and tell me, what are we using? A media. Okay, that's one. Grammar, way of putting... grammar. Grammar. Thoughts. 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 Uh, hands. Language. Words. 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 Who said words? Identify yourself. Words. Logo. Thank you. Thank you. We are, all, we are using words, whether we are speaking or whether we are writing. We are using words. And where do we use words? Where do we use words? While talking, while speaking. And if we start improving the way we talk, no, 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 we don't have to wait for Independence Day celebrations when, and wait for somebody to call us as chief guests to come and uh, hoist the flag and then make a speech, no. In normal, ordinary talking to people, in normal, ordinary talking to your relatives, to your wife, to your husband, to your children, you can improve the way you speak. I call it the WPC method. What is WPC? And in the course of the next one hour, or maybe less because time is going fast, I'm going to use this English term called acronyms. Acronyms means I will just use the first letter of each word and we'll make a word with it so that all of us will be able to remember it better, okay? So what is the WPC method? The W is 
Let us start watching the way we speak. Yes, it's so easy to turn to a, a little child or turn to a husband and say, what man, where are you going? Well, come, go to the market and buy that thing and come. No, if you want to improve, even if they laugh at you, stop speaking the way we normally speak. Start speaking precisely because when we speak and when we practice with people who are close to us, we automatically start, think, start doing the same towards the world at large. So watch the way you speak. Are we speaking in a colloquial way? Are we speaking in a slang? Okay. What kind of a voice are we using? Do we pitch low? Do we uh, talk in measured tones? Do we use all these lovely ways of being able to get uh, emotion across? Or do we just say it, you know, go to the market and come, no, and when you're coming from the market, just get, get some fish also and come back, okay? Because uh, I want to cook the fish and we'll all have a nice time in the afternoon when I'm eating. What a waste. Will you go to the market and come? And when you're coming back, just pick up some fish and we'll have a lovely time eating the fish. You love fish, right? Don't you? Yes, I love fish. Let's eat it and enjoy it. Put emotion into your voice and start using it. All of us in India, each one of us, we expect that the words themselves will jump out of our mouths and form expressions in the minds of the hearer. No, it won't. We have to start using our own volume and see to it, see to it that, I'm, I'm sorry, our own voice and see to it that it is able to get the best effect. So the WPC is watch the way you speak. And to watch the way you speak, I'm going to use this acronym called voice. Voice, just what I'm using right at the moment, voice. And I'm going to make that V-O-I-C-E into a word. I'm sometimes very bad at spelling. So if I, if I uh, you put S instead of C, please, uh, one of you all correct me. Herman, just jump out of your seat and tell me, Robert, how can you write in newspapers when you spell voice that way? Just do it immediately. The V, the v of voice, let's call it volume. When we speak, Remember to use the correct volume. Sometimes when we are speaking over the phone, there is really no need for the person in Nasik to hear our voice already from here. You know, in the good old days of the trunk calls, whenever the people used to go to the old PCO, they used to shout in such a way that there was no need for the PCO. You would hear, you, you could hear in the next 10 miles what the man was saying. But today we have phones which are able to pick up the best clarity in your voice. I'm looking for telemarketers uh, today uh, and I've been talking to different people and I've been watching the way they've been using their voice. Most of them don't know how to use the voice. Learn to use your voice. It's God-given. They say the best musical instrument, forget the trumpets, forget the flutes, forget the other uh, violins and so on which have been made. The best musical instrument is the voice God has given you. How many of us have learned to use it well? How many of us have learned sometimes to quieten down a crowd or maybe an angry child with just by using the right pitch at home? In the Bible, it's written, a soft answer turneth away wrath. What does it mean by a soft answer? By going, somebody shouting at you. You just turn to that person and say, yes, I understand. Some of you all are going to work in call centers and so on because there's a lot of scope in that in which customers might yell at you and all you have to say is, yes, sir, I understand. And immediately the other person at the other end will say, wow, somebody's listening to me. So the volume, V-O-I-C, voice, the volume of your voice when you're speaking, when you're communicating is so important. The O in the word voice, is be orderly, orderly when you're speaking. You know, very often we jump words. 
we just we we are so eager to finish a sentence because we feel that we'll forget what we have to say that we start jumping and scrambling our words like as if it is you know a second world war or code which is going on and uh, in the process whoever we are talking to doesn't understand what we are saying quite often i used to see that my poor driver would go to the market and then from there he would say sab he'll phone me up and i would realize that it was me who did not communicate well in telling him in an orderly fashion what i wanted because i would be so jumbled up in trying to tell him that you know go there buy this thing go to the next shop buy that buy that go by the by the time i was so excited in trying to get all those things that i forgot that the poor man couldn't remember but when we do it with order we are communicating effectively so voice o orderly fashion the i am i right nilesh am i is my spelling going right perfect perfect sir thank you this is the first time i think <laughs> the i is to be indulgent i know it's a little strong word which i'm using indulgent the indulgent if you put it more plainly it means to be a good listener when we are talking also listen what do we listen to listen to the person's body language listen to the person and how he is reacting to your speech very often people who are boring will go on being boring because they are not looking to see how their speech is being re- received by the other people you know in the uh, i was a captain of the ship the whatever we uh, mv this thing and that thing and we fought this battle and uh, as we trained our guns on those pakistani boats they knew that we were coming me on the other end i'm waiting for the story to finish pakistani boats soon the gun will be fired and the story is over and i can go to the other person and listen and then we fired the guns and the next moment that ship went then our ship came back and i jumped on to the next ship and i walked on the next ship and there i must tell you the next story and it goes on and on and on because we do not look to see to notice whether the listener is interested or not even as we speak observe when i have my classes which i have on fridays and saturdays i i ask everybody to come in on full screen the reason i want them on full screen is i like to see who's bored and if somebody is bored that means something's wrong with me if any one of you here are bored with what is happening then there's nothing wrong with you there's something wrong with what i'm saying and immediately i have to change my talking or shut up anyway any of you want me to shut up just put up your hand but listen watch other people see how your speech is being received by other people all the time don't just listen to your words look look at a youngster who speaking who you're speaking to do you see defiance do you see a rebellious spirit please understand that that rebellious spirit is because he's saying listen i have something to, for you to hear me it doesn't mean that he's a rebel it just means that nobody is listening to him you've seen that in your children sometimes the child causing a tantrum is causing the tantrum not because he's a spoiled child he's causing the tantrum because he wants to tell you something and unless you start listening to what that person is saying or the child is saying you will carry on speaking regardless so when we speak when we communicate indulge the other person listen to how their body language is and what also they say with their mouths and the c of voice is to be confident remember you want to communicate with your voice you want to communicate on the phone or on whatsapp or on uh, uh uh zoom be confident yes there are they say about the preachers uh, these uh, fathers in churches that the times they thump their pulpit and the time they come out strongly is the time that their subject is a little weak well i'm not telling you to do exactly that but i'm telling you that when you have something powerful to sell 
make yourself confident in your talk and get that across. Don't go with timidity to somebody and say, excuse me, I've got an idea. Yeah, shut up. We don't want to hear you. And even if they don't say shut up, they're saying shut up in their minds and they won't listen to you. Go confidently, talk confidently, learn to use yourself fully, completely, and you'll be heard. And the E, and the E of voice is energy, passion. What is energy? Energy is even when you're tired, even when you're tired to be able to walk and to be able to give a complete conversation or speech at a place. My daughter, my daughter was the Bloomberg TV anchor. And uh, very often she would tell me at the beginning of her job, when she went into the TV station, she would say, dad, she would call me from there and say, dad, I'm so tired, dad, I'm tired. And everything that's happened in the night and everything that's happened is just, I don't know how I'm going to handle the audience today. And I told her one thing, I said, Varuna, Rune, I call her Rune, Runa. I said, when you enter those glass place where you're going to face the audience, your, your viewers, your thousands and thousands of viewers, when you go there to face the camera, leave everything outside, go in with energy. Even if I had a tough day today and throughout the morning, I come to talk to you all. I have to be filled with energy because energy communicates the best. Use your energy. Drag it out. Wasai has a lot of sea around it. So with fishing nets, drag your energy out of the sea. Push it on yourself and go. Remember, biblically, it was always Jesus walking around the coast in, in boats with fish, telling the fishermen, telling his disciples, draw the net, draw the fish from the other side. Yes, the energy is always on the other side. Draw it out and use it. That's what energy is for. That is the voice. That is how we do our delivery. When I talked about voice, I talked about delivery. Now I'm going to tell you about the W. That was the watch the way you speak, which is voice. Plan the way you speak, the WP. Plan the way you speak. And in planning the way you speak, I'm not going to use one more acronym for you to remember, or is he going to go back and say, this guy, Bob, he came over there and filled us with words to uh, remember, and now it was like I was back in school. No, I won't do that. I'm going to give you something which you, you should never forget. What is this? House. House, house. Lovely. Lighted. Yes, it's a lighted house. I'm going to keep it over here so that you will see it as we go along. Before I became a writer, I was a lot to do. I was a lot, a lot to do in contract work and uh, used to do a lot of contract work for builders and construction people. And if you remember, I don't know how many of you all remember, there used to be a TV show called Bob the Builder. Anybody remembers? A TV show called Bob the Builder. It was some, time, some years back. Yes, yes. yes. Okay, okay. Now I want you to remember Bob the Builder. Okay. That was my old profession. In fact, I still remember uh, one of the talks which I was giving at uh, many, many years back at St. Xavier's College in uh, Bombay. And I was going to speak. Uh, the father next to me nudged me and he said, Robert, I remember you. And I felt so good. You know, I said, oh, he remembers my article which I wrote yesterday and he's going to talk about it. Let me tell you, we writers are very vain people. And I said, yes, father. And he said, you know, didn't you do the leakage for a roof uh, some two, three, uh, two decades ago? It started leaking again. I said, oh, my building, my contract work follows me wherever I go, either in leakage or walls falling down or replastering work and so on. So I, I've given you this anecdote just to remember the house. 
what do we remember of the house when it comes to our speech or the way we talk? What do we remember of the house when it comes to planning what we talk? What should we remember? House, okay? We finished voice where we talked about how we use our voice. Now we're talking about how we plan to say what we have to say. Why do we have to plan? Because when we plan, we also know what we want to say and we say it completely. So planning is very important in any kind of talk that we give, whether we're planning to talk to our wife or whether we're planning to talk to, no, 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 I'm not being manipulative, but in any kind of a talk which we give, we have to make little plans of what we want to convey. And the house helps us. What is at the bottom of the house? What do we build the house on? What is this called? Foundation. The, the foundation. And what is the foundation? The foundation is the idea which crystallizes into the plot that we have before we speak or before we write. In the class which I take and which I'll be taking immediately after we finish today is Friday, I'll be taking the class. Today we postponed it from six o'clock to seven o'clock so I could be with you all. In the, uh, most, of the, most of my class, whether it's this month or the previous month or the months before, get, lo get lost in the, in the idea of what comes first, the idea of the house or the plot of the house. And they all think that very often that the idea is what makes the house. Well, let me put it this way. All of us dream of a house for our family. And we dream to ourselves, what do we dream? We dream of a bathroom which we bo my wife will have, which will be totally ours. My children's, my, both my children having separate bedrooms. I'm, I'm dreaming big, okay? Both my children having separate bedrooms. We dream of a lovely balcony where, because Vasai has a lot of it, a lot, nice balcony where we can sit and we can sip our coffee in the morning or tea in the morning. We dream of all these things, but that is not a plot. That is the idea of the house. Then we come to putting our idea into practice. What do we do? We create a blueprint. Sitting room will be 15 feet by 10 feet. Bedroom will be 12 feet by 10 feet. On either side, a bathroom between. We'll have a master bathroom, uh, a master bedroom and a master bathroom because it'll be bigger than the children's. And we'll have a little staircase going up and we'll have a bedroom on top also for the guests or Maybe uh, we'll give it on rent. We create a foundation. And when you talk, always remember this part of the house, the foundation. Have a plot. Have a plot before you speak. De decide the plan of what you're going to say. And what is on top of the <clears throat> foundation which goes up, straight up, Straight up, walls. walls. Now, have, we were just talking about that guy who was talking about the ship, you know, I was uh, serving on this ship and then as we think that the sh he's going to stop uh, talking about this ship, he moves on to the next ship or he might even move on to, he's gone on land and so on. When you talk, build your walls straight up on your foundation. And the whole idea of the uh, whole idea of the walls is to meet the roof, which means that you should know at the beginning what the end of your talk is going to be. You should know at the beginning what the end of your writing is going to be. If you are going to get to ask for an order, to, uh, uh, which, which you're going to meet a customer for, that is your end. Your end is not asking him where his wife is working and where his children are studying. And your end is not knowing to, you are going to where you ask him where your brother-in-law and you uh, knew each other when they studied together in school. Because if that happened, your end will go meandering all over. Bring all that as part of the construction of the wall going straight up. But your final end is ending at the roof. And you see this so often. I'm sure there are a lot of businessmen over here even if they're not businessmen, there are others over here who go through the same thing. Sometimes <clears throat> we go to see a customer and we, now are, we, we are never able to get the customer to come down to the paper to sign on the dotted line. 
Have you noticed that? The dotted line is to say that, yes, I want this order. Yes, I'm willing to pay 5 lakhs for this order. I'm willing to pay 10 lakhs for this order. But for that, the paper is in your briefcase. You have to take it out. They have to ask the other person to sign on it. We never have the guts to do it because all our conversation has been going this side and that side and not towards the signing of the order. But if we led all our conversation slowly, nicely, not saying that, Anything else except building yourself up in the eyes of a customer gradually till he is to tell him, uh, now can we just finish the order? And he'll say, yes, of course. I was wondering where the paper was. You bring it. That is the end. And when you're writing a story, when you're writing a story, remember, the story also has an end. Every day I have to write a column which I have to send to my newspapers and at the beginning, I have to understand that I need to know the end of the story, even the uh, end of the article before I start the beginning of the article. A lot of writers put their pen to paper and start writing immediately. And what happens? They go through a story of 500 words and at 450 words, they realize they have not had, they don't have any ending at all. It's going on and on and on. And suddenly, abruptly, in one sentence, they bring one ending and the whole 500 word story is spoiled. The same with your speech, the same with the sale, the same with whatever you do. Know what you want at the beginning of when you start doing it. When, your children, when you are going to drive from Wasai to uh, Kolaba, when you're going to drive from, uh, from my Anderi to Pune, I should be able to know the whole route I am going and know where I'm going to finally go. I don't get into my car and then say, okay, we start driving. Where? No, we start driving. Some of us speak that way. We start driving. No, we no need to know where we're going to reach. Then we need to know where we're going to stop for breakfast, where we're going to stop for lunch. Then we need to know how much time we're going to spend for breakfast, how much time we're going to spend for lunch. All these are the little comic places, which in a speech or so on, we don't spend much time on. If we have one hour to make a sale of 500 words to write an article, we don't spend time on cracking jokes with the customer for the next 45 minutes and then say 15 minutes uh, we have left and then try to bring back, bring it into sale. He's so much, he's so happy with laughing. He thinks, wow, this man has just come to entertain me. Uh, another, another five minutes is going to go away. You haven't got a sale. But if each joke, if each of what you're saying is moving towards what you want, then you proportionately build your wall straight up. You get it? Okay. The next, where does the wall reach? It reaches the roof of the house. And what is the roof of the house? The roof of the house I call the research which you do before either writing an article or doing a speech or even talking to a customer. You have to do research. If you're going to uh, meet, uh, meet a, a customer who's manufacturing uh, maybe plastic, you've got to know something about plastic before you go to meet him. So you have to do your research. If I'm going to write, uh, like to this morning I wrote an article on uh, COVID-19. Well, if I'm writing an article on COVID-19, uh, I shouldn't do my research on the influenza or, or on typhoid or on jaundice. I need to know enough about COVID-19 that even if I write a humor column, I need to have my research intact. Most of us, most of us forget to do our research. We go, to, we go to a place thinking, yeah, we can just, we have the gift of the gab. Oh, I've heard this from so many people. He's got the gift of the gab. So he'll be a wonderful salesman. You think so? You think so? Let me tell you that quiet man over there will be a better salesman than the man who has the gift of the gab because the quiet man over there has a thing called sincerity, which the customer loves. Credibility, which the customer loves. Authenticity, which the customer loves. And why? Because whatever he speaks has been done with research. Whatever you write, writing and speaking better to build a good business, isn't it? Do your research. 
Be powerful in your research. Find out before you write. Find out before you speak. Learn more about it. Otherwise, be silent. It's very important. That's the roof of the house. What do we have inside the house? What normally is inside the house? Before we come to people, okay? What is inside the house? Furniture. That's it. Furniture. Thank you very much. I, I appreciate, uh, you know, people who come out of the Zoom uh, experience and are able to bring it out like as if we are talking in a hall. It makes it so much easier for me as a speaker to be able to bring out the ideas because what I'm getting is receptivity from people. Thank you so much. Furniture. Now, I don't know if you have it in uh, Versailles. I'm sure you have it in Versailles. I see a lot of it in Goa. You have small chapels and you have cathedrals, right? Yes. Do you take the pews of a big cathedral and put it into a small chapel? The pews, the pews which you sit on. No, oh, it no. look it look awful. The pews of a big cathedral belong to a big cathedral, and in a chapel where we're going to pray, uh, we have maybe just cushions. We have small pieces of furniture. And the same way with words. The furniture which you use are the words which you use in your speaking or in your writing. If you are going to address or talk to children or talk to <clears throat> or youngsters, there's certain kinds of words that we use. We use small words. I told you, we don't use the furniture of the cathedral to put it in our chapel of speaking, we use small words. And the same thing that we do also, when we're going to speak to adults, we don't use Mary had a little lamb words or Jack and Jill words or Humpty Dumpty words. We use a little bit of more expressive words. And again, I'm not telling you to use uh, Sashi Tarur words. Sashi Tarur, you know, as famous for using huge, big words. No, he doesn't use huge, big words to communicate. He uses huge, big words when asked whether there's a word for it. But when he communicates, when he's talking to people, he doesn't use those words. He doesn't. Why? Because, my dear friends, when we are communicating we use the words that can best communicate our thought. We don't use words to impress people. If I were to sit over, sit over here and use huge mighty words to show you that I'm a king of English, I'd be a stupid fool. My whole idea in sitting here is to be able to communicate to every single person who's listening to me, right? Which means that I have to use words for communication and not use big English words to impress my audience. Because if the audience goes home saying, wow, what a great guy, what a speech. What did he speak on? I don't know when, but he spoke so well. You don't know what he spoke on? No, I don't know. But what big words? What a waste. What a waste. So remember the inside of the house, the furniture is most important. Correct furniture depending on who you're speaking to, depending who you're building this house for. Remember that. And inside the house, also remember, what did, we build, what did we build this house for? We built this house for people, isn't it? For a dad and a mom. We built this house for children inside there, isn't it? For our cousins to be there. And what happens when there are people? What happens when there are people? Like I said, you can unmute, you can say something. There's warmth. There's warmth, yeah. right? Interaction. 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 Yes, okay. There is feeling. There is passion. There is love. There is anger. There's lots of emotion. Lots of... Uh, lots of... Uh, uh, skirmishes, fights, making up, all these happen inside a house. And that's the passion that we need to put into every article that we write. How often I read an article which has no passion in it. And I wonder why did you put it as an article? It could have been Xerox sheets distributed around for a research paper or a, a PhD thesis. 
if you're writing something for people, remember in a newspaper, the person who, where does your eye go in a newspaper, sadly? Sadly. It goes towards the murders that took place. It goes towards robberies that took place. People read newspapers for passion. And when you write, please, you don't have to write about murders and news thing. I don't write about that stuff. But I have to compete my daily column with murders and other things that take place. So my article has to have passion in it. It has to have maybe laughter in it. It has to have jokes in it. It has to have feeling in it. And the same way with what you speak, the same way when you put your ideas across, bring in humor, bring in people, bring, I mean, bring in passion, bring in love, bring in joy. And that people will read. And the next lot of things inside this house are Pets. We love pets, isn't it? We love to have a little pet. Uh, we love to have a dog or a cat uh, going around all over us. Or some people keep parrots, some people keep uh, other pets, but just they love it. Why? Because they love watching a fish in a, a fish tank going across. It breaks the monotony. And the same way in our, in our talk, have little periods of jokes, or little bit of wit and laughter. This is not passion. Passion is about love and anger and so on, the big things. These are the little frivolous little things that run around. A small line here, something that brings a smile on the face of people so that they know it's not such a serious world. And we need to tell the people, even in these COVID times, that it's not such a serious world. It's okay. Things will get better. Here's a little bit of laughter. My dad loved my father loved going for movies and I used to ask him what movies he used to love going to. And he used to say, I, I love going for these uh, old Second World War movies. And I asked him, why dad, why do you love going for that? You like, you like the shooting uh, and you love, love the missiles and you love the bombing? He said, no, Bob. I love that little bit of talking that takes place in humor when, when five of these soldiers are together in a trench and they just bring out some little bit of humor, some bit of wit, even as they're facing death, they have that coming in. And how nice it makes the movie. And he used to point this out to me. I remember in Guns of Navarone, I don't think you'll remember all that, but Guns of Navarone and so other, so uh, the other movies, he would point those five of them just before they're going to risk their lives something to make a smile go across the face of all those sitting in the audience in a the theater. So beautiful. Use it. Use it in your speech. Bring it in. People want it. That's the pets inside the house. And then outside. What is outside? We have the garden of the house. Now, I, I'm a little short of space over here. You understand, Bombay, I can't build a big house over here. Bombay, we have a little concern. It's not like Vasai, where you have a lot of space. I'm staying a little bit in the city where we are cramped for space. So I don't have space for a big garden over here. It would have taken the whole room. But what does a garden do? The garden entices people. It tells people, what a lovely house this is. Come, to, come over here, enjoy us. We are good people. We'll give you a cup of coffee. We'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll have a cup of tea with you or snacks. The garden talks about the people inside. It says, we are inviting you. What is the garden in, your, in the talk that you give? What is the garden in the story that you write? What is the garden in the speech that you make? The first line. The first line. Nobody is going to read the next line and the next and the next and next unless they're interested in the first paragraph and the first line which you've written or the title of your work. Nobody's going to listen to the rest of your sales speech unless they get caught by what you said at the beginning. How much we miss that first line. How much we talk nonsense in that first thing because we are so embarrassed. We are so or feeling a little apprehensive, scared of that person in front of us. Let it be. Oh, I've tripped over wires and tripped over different things before I've seen a customer and finally landed up on his desk because <laughs> I'm so nervous. I've been through it and I know how it is. 
but practice that first line. Practice going over there and with that first line or your story, the first paragraph, you draw the reader in. Have you noticed? Have you gone to a bookshop? What is the first thing that you do? I know, apart from smelling the book, I don't know why most of us also smell the book. It's a lovely smell. I do it. I do it. That's, I don't know if others do it. I just love smelling a book because it brings me into a feel like, hey, we are your friends. Come to us. But apart from that, what do we do? We read that first paragraph. How does the author write? That first line draws us. So remember that. Draw people with that first sentence, that first line. And after you brought that person in, then that person will stay there through the rest of your speech, through the rest of your story, through the rest of your sales talk. And you'll have a successful sale just by learning how to communicate effectively. Finally, to be remembered in your talking, to be remembered in your writing, a one ingredient which you need to keep is a word which I call dignity. Dignity is something that is slowly moving out of our present world. Well, it started a long time back, but it got into uh, focus with our great Trump over there in America, who, who personified being crass and crude with his words, and he was elected still being a crass and crude man. What did he throw out of the window? He threw out of the window a beautiful word called dignity. And dignity is what we need to be remembered for, even as we give our talk, we write our story, or we do a sale. When we go out of a place, people need to say, we just saw and heard a gentleman. We just saw and heard a dignified lady. What a way she spoke. What a way he spoke. There was so much dignity. And that same dignity needs to be kept even as we are among friends, practicing the WPC method. When we crack jokes among us and find that sometimes we need to be crass and crude to get a laugh, sometimes we can stop ourselves and say that if we effectively communicate, we can even communicate with a dignified joke and get the same laugh if we are able to spend a little time in doing some homework into how to say it. Dignity is a, has been leaving us and to a very great extent, forget about America, it's been leaving our country also, sadly, sadly. The speeches which are here today being made from the tops of, what, of thousands of people are no more shroud in cloaked and camouflaged anymore. It's pointed, it's dirty, it's filthy, and it's hurting. And if you want to be good communicators, bring dignity back. And again, I'm going to use dignity quickly into opening up that word. The D stands for decency. Deliver decency. Dignity, D-I-G-N-I-T-Y. Deliver decency when you speak. And the I inspire, inspire people. And I'm talking to uh, maybe office bearers over here who are, who are going to lead uh, this uh, organization. Remember, inspire people with your idealism, not just inspire, be inclusive. Be inclusive, bring people in. Dignity is not when the I becomes I. I did it. I, saw, I uh, fought against COVID, the first attack, and I won. Dignity is when we say, we all will fight together, and we all will win, and we mean it. Inclusive. The I is inclusiveness, idealism, and inspiration. There's so many I's except that one I, which we shouldn't, shouldn't use, which is me. Me. No. Inclusiveness. 
And the G is grow leaders. Dignity is grow leaders. Look across your room, across to, to who you see is the quiet person over there. I can't do it in Zoom. I can do it in a smaller class. And I see somebody who is looking like he wants to talk. And I bring him out. And I say, come. Because that person who's brought out of his silence and his feeling of inadequacy can become a leader. If you have helped in uh, building him up. So the G is grow leaders. The N is nip negativity. Nip it. As soon as you see it, as soon as you see somebody who comes to your room and says, oh, this COVID is going too far. Every, it's okay. How can we fight it? What can we do so that the lockdown can be interesting? What ideas can we give to our people? Nip negativity. Anybody knows what's the next letter? It's I. Oh, sorry. Somebody is, isn't sleeping. And what's the word? Well, just to remind me, you know, I'm a little bit old when it comes to these words. What's the word? It's word? Dignity. Dignity. Anybody else? Dignity. 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 So after the N comes the, another I. Improve your area of influence. Improve it. Your workplace, your home. What it is today, improve it a bit for the tomorrow. Improve it. Don't let it be stagnant. Stagnancy is something when your club, I was so happy to hear what you've been doing during these COVID times. 17 good speakers, bringing them in. Of course, finally you got me. 17 good speakers and this 18th that turned out to, to be like this way. Let, let it be. Sometimes it happens. But Improve your area, improve your influence, improve your workspace, make it better. And the T of dignity is thoughtfulness, thoughtfulness, caring, compassion. Please bring it into your back into your lives. Caring and compassion, where we feel for somebody else who's going through a situation, is going out of the window. We have become more self-centered. But if you want to be a good communicator, you need to feel for others. Do you know that? A good communicator is not always thinking of himself. You want to write better. You want to sell. You want to speak better. You want to sell better. You want to build a business better. You need to be thoughtful of your customer or to the person you're speaking to. Compassion brings out the best in you. Caring brings out the best in you. And finally, the why of dignity Yield, yield to a higher power. Yield to a higher power. People have asked me, where did you meet God? And I always tell them I met God in my business. I met God when I was m m most probably the weakest, at my weakest moments there, when I didn't know what to do. And I would say, what do I do, Lord? And in that weakest moment, I would get an idea and you knew where that idea would come from. Even in my writer's class, which I conduct today, every single idea, including all that I've given you today, has come only through prayer. Only through prayer. No other way. It's not come from Google search. It's not come from anywhere else. It's just come from walking in the mornings when I do my morning walk and say, okay, Lord, I've got a seminar in the evening. Give me my thoughts so that I can speak effectively to them and bring out the best ideas. Yield to a higher power. And you know what will happen when you do that? Your communication will get what we call, in the, biblically, the fruit of the Spirit. And what is the fruit of the Spirit? It is love and joy and peace and patience, kindness, goodness, faith, gentleness, and self-control. Don't you want to be that? Don't we, don't we need to be that in this world which is looking out for us and saying, what kind of people are they? They call themselves the Basin Christian Businessmen's Group. What, what kind of people are they? And that is when I bring you back to the house and I say that what comes out of the house? What is coming out of the house? Light. Light. 
I could have put up a house over here, which is just a house without a light in it. But when, when the light comes out, it is a light which goes out into the world. And that is what we do need to do with every part of our communication. If you're a salesman, let it be light which comes out of you. If you're a writer, let it be light that comes out of you. If you are a speaker, bring light. Take away, take away darkness and bring light into everything that you do. Before I end, before I end, I would like to say that to be an effective communicator, you sometimes have to move out of your comfort zone. Not sometimes, always. And very often you'll be laughed at. Very often there'll be people around you who'll say, Hare, I know him. I know him, I know where he comes from. Yeah, he comes down that road over there and look what the way he's talking like as if he owns the world. Yes. I remember once I was a judge at IIT. They have uh, Mood Indigo over there and they called me to be a judge. And this was different colleges from all over had come to put up plays over there. And while these plays were being put up and some of them were women, ladies colleges like Sapphires and so on who had come. And while one of the girls' colleges were putting up their plays. There was a lot of booing going on from the men. And this became more and more apparent. And like I told you, I was a judge. And after some time, the ladies, the girls, they went and whispered to the organizers. And then the organizer came to me and said, Sir, the girls from all the colleges are saying that they are walking away because there's too much of booing going on by the audience and the boys. And I said, oh, God, I've come all the way to be a judge, and now I don't have work to do. I'm unemployed. So I said, no, one minute, one minute. Don't go away. Let me just give me the mic. Let me speak for a moment. And I spoke at that moment, and I said, listen, the world will always boo you. There will not be a play or anything that you put up in which you will not hear the boos of your relatives and your friends and the audience. Don't tell them to stop their booings. Don't tell them to stop their booing. Still the boo with your acting. Still the boo with the kind of communication, with the kind of building up your business, with the kind of going up the ladder which you do. That is the way to still the boo. The boos of the world. And the girls went up and they acted again. And let me tell you, it was spectacular acting which took place. And there was silence from the crowd because they had learned to still the booze through their work, through their communication. So remember, it's all within you to handle the world. Remember to still the booze and not, and not to tell them to shut up. Nobody will. And I'll end, I'll end with this favorite poem of mine, which I had written those days when I grew up. There was no Xeroxing and there was no, I couldn't afford cyclostyling. So I wrote this in red and pushed it and stuck it next to my uh, cot where I grew up as a little boy. And I'm going to read that poem to you. And I want it to be, remain in your minds as we move from here and move off to become effective communicators. And this poem is, and let me say to you, if you think you are beaten, you are. If you think you dare not, you don't. If you like to win, but you think you can't, it is almost certain you won't. If you think you lose, you're lost. For out in the world we find, success begins with a fellow's will. It's all in the state of the mind. If you think you're outclassed, you are. You've got to think high to rise. You've got to be sure of yourself before you can even win a prize. And my dear friends, the last verse, life's battles don't always go to the stronger or faster man. But sooner or later, the man who wins is the man who shouts and says and thinks he can. And with these words, thank you. Thank you.
A big round of applause. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your valuable time and the fantastic knowledge we have enhanced due to your presence today. We really are grateful and honored today to have you amongst us, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, over to you, sir, to take the question answer sessions if time permits. Yeah, I think we can have uh, three questions maximum. As of now, we do not have any questions uh, on chat. But yes, uh, participants can unmute themselves and uh, can go ahead with questions. If at all, uh, sir permits. Of course. Yes. I love questions. Bob's excellent uh, session. Bob, this is Linus. Good evening. Uh, hi, Linus. Thank you. Thank you. Always a pleasure listening to you. Thank you, Linus. I always I need... learn something, everything, and every time you bring in the Bible, which is also makes it more inspiring. God bless you. Thank you. But for me, the Bible is my textbook. You know, I can't help but bring it. It's it's there every moment. And I'm telling all of you all, start using it. It's a wonderful textbook. And as you read it, and I'm a literature student, I've done my master's in English. Let me tell you that no man could have written such a great work. It could only come from God. I'm talking as a literature student. Impossible for it to have been written by anybody but the divine. Okay, any questions? Any questions on what I've spoken? You know, on the light, should I use a bigger bulb? Should I uh, use uh, build a bigger house? Any questions? Yeah. I have one question. Hello. Yes, please identify yourself. Who's yeah. this? Good evening. My name is David, David DeMonte. Hi, Derek. Hi. Uh, David, David. Okay. Yeah. So, my question is that uh, it is said that Thought of failure is the seed of failure. And as you rightly said, uh, if you can or can't, like both of you are right. So I just want to know how to overcome this. Because many times, if you want to plan anything and do the action, but uh, maximum time, we uh, the negative thoughts come into the mind instead of positive. It will be possible the other way. So just... Yes. Uh, Okay, uh, you said your uh, name is Delic. Just spell it out to me. David, David, David. David, David. David. Oh, David. Yeah. Okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, David, yeah. Uh, okay, I can I cannot give you a formula. I can just tell you what I do. Okay, uh, because depression is something that a writer a writer feels is his birthright. Okay, we go through moods. Yeah. Where, because all the time we're going through moods. So yeah. what I do when things go down, Hmm. And this, uh, and this, this of course is not my thought. It's something which I have been reading all along, and which I've started inculcating. But what I do hmm. when things go wrong is to make a list of all the things that I have to be thankful for. So the yeah. first thing I write is, is my wife still with me? Yeah, I mean, I hope she is. <laughs> you never know. This one-hour lecture is what happens. Anyway, I, I think she is. My wife is with me. How's her health? How's my health? How are my children? And then I, even if my business or other things are doing badly, I start listing the th things I have to be thankful for. And once I've list listed that, I say, okay, this is my foundation from where, from thankfulness, I'll now move into positivity. And like the two of a five loaves of, uh, you know, the two fishes and the five loaves of bread, I say, Lord, this is all I've got. Now bless it and make it big. This is the little positivity I got with my frail human mind. That's all I've got. Bless it and make it big. And it always happens. It always happens. But the first initial thing, David, I have to do myself. Yeah. I have to knock okay. out the uh, I have to knock out and bring in thanks thanks into my life. Okay, I still own my house. Gratitude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Hello, Michael. Michael here. Yes, Michael. So, Bob, uh, the other day I walked into a church. You know, it was it was pretty new, and I, the first time I was attending that church because it was my father-in-law's church. The pastor walked up to me, and he knew that I'm a theological student, and he said, "Okay, can you please speak for five minutes?" 
So I said, no, not today. I'm not organized. So when you get a chance like that, how do you organize your thoughts in no time and give that five minutes inspirational speech? Oh, I'm so glad you brought this up, Michael. Thank I'm you. so glad you brought this up. I'll tell you why. Uh, this is something I've forgotten to mention in so many of my classes and talks and so on. Okay. You know, we, we talked to the word plan. You got yes. a WPC method. That's right. Okay. There's another word, which the same P, which is prepare. Okay. And uh, I found this fascinating. You know, we are, uh, we are, you're, standing in a, you're standing in a crowd and there's, there's a, something terrible which has happened. And the priest is praying or they don't have a priest. And I start preparing and say, okay, Bob, they're going to call me. Prepare your prayer. Imagine preparing mm -hmm. your prayer. But I prepare my prayer. And I said, mm -hmm. okay, this, 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 this is what I need to pray for. And I prepare my prayer. 80 times out of 100, I'm not called to pray. Maybe they don't feel my prayers are good. But anyway, 80 times out of 100, I, I'm not called to pray. But 100 times out of 100, I have prepared myself in case they call me. Okay. And they call me. And I'm called either <clears throat> maybe to speak a few words uh, or to pray or to or something or other and i'm always preparing and saying okay these are the points i would put together and michael i'm so glad you brought this but all of us as we okay. get to be public speakers as we yeah. get to be speakers and become effective start preparing a list of the points and put those points across so that you become effective in whatever we are called to do Third question. Thank you so much, Bob. My pleasure, Michael. Uh, yeah, I think we can have uh, one last question. Sir. Yes. I want to ask a very simple question. Uh, uh, very. So this is Harman. I... Yeah. Please identify yourself so sir understands. So no, I, I know was, Herman well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he introduced me. <laughs> yeah, I just logged in and logged, uh, left and joined in again because I was uh, I had uh, this problem of the volume. Now I'm here. I can hear it clearly. Uh, a very uh, uh, simple question is: I want, if I want to write a book, and I have some chapters and on uh, an idea in place, but the Problem is, I don't want to write it down, actually with the pen and the paper. Is there any other method where you could speak and someone writes for you? Yes, I mean, yeah, you, you could always, uh, but the process is the same. See, the process is your mind. Uh, whether you put it down, you write it down on your uh, with your pen and paper or type it onto a computer, or you use your voice and you are able to dictate it, it's all the same. You can use any method you want. But the process, but the process of what you do is, I don't want to bring that in. It's exactly what I teach in my writer's course. By the end of one month, each of these people have written a book, have written 10 chapters of their plots of a book and one full chapter done by the end of one month. And if I were to tell them that you're going to do this at the beginning of the month, they would almost probably run away and say, no, 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 impossible. But the end, when the last day, then they say, I never believed that I could actually write a book. And I tell them, you know, we just think it's some overwhelming thing when we see these books. Actually, they just cracked the formula. We can all write books. We just crack that formula and that's what I teach. It's very easy. But coming to your question, whether you write it or whether you dictate it, it's all the same, but follow the, pl the plot formula which I teach in my class. Okay, sir, I got it, but thank you. So there okay. is no speaking from actually writing it. It's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Others will remain a thought, uh, Herman. It'll remain a thought and, you know, beautiful thoughts are in the minds of us, which are never communicated to the rest of our world, especially children who want to know how, you, how you've done well, how have you succeeded? 
what were the failures that you went through they need yes. to know they, yes. the next generation needs to know that we failed also and failure is what we stepped on to become what we are they need to know that otherwise we are like saints in front of them and they think you all never did anything wrong no we need to tell them we did a lot of things wrong and on that we built our success oh great great exactly as i was thinking on the same lines and uh, uh, i will write some day with your thank help you. thank you and i'm there for any one of you all anybody wants to write a book any wants to well wants to uh, sell of or, uh, or to learn how to speak just call me up we'll talk i love talking on writing just take my number from nilesh call me up whenever you want we'll chat oh great sir great thank you so much thank you thank you thank you sir uh, now may i invite bestie for final thanksgiving yes bestie hi <laughs> <laughs> i'm so sorry sir for, for being late and uh, thank you nilesh for inviting me and uh, thanks a lot sir for this wonderful session because listening to you after such a long time uh, brings back all those uh, memories from the course from our first batch in october end and through november and december we had a wonderful time uh, learning all these methods and as you mentioned uh, implementing them to a certain extent as well and uh, moreover applying these and uh, listening to them once again uh, what i really uh, got to understand is that we need to make this our person you know when we are when we have when we are true to ourselves and when we are right uh, then the flow the outcome of it in our speaking and in the way we write is reflected uh, in a natural way and uh, thank you for being so genuine and so uh, big hearted as you always have been and your words have given us lot of encouragement and on behalf of uh, basin christian business association i thank you we are very grateful that you took out your time and we also thank all the students who agreed to postpone today's session to 7 pm <laughs> thank you for all their cooperation and uh, your presence today is encouraging to all of us here who have uh, been having a tough time carrying uh, forward our business and uh, also in this during this lockdown uh, lockdown we have listened to so many messages and we have attended so many webinars and today this is the 17th webinar and uh, we, we can uh, we can boldly say that yes we are encouraged we are refreshed and we are encouraged and this gives us the fuel uh, to go on and to continue to do what we do whether it is in speaking or whether it is through writing and i also thank uh, john pinto for introducing me to robert sir and also uh, linus who encouraged me to call sir to this platform uh, thank you very much and uh, nilesh herman and samson for facilitating such a beautiful uh, webinar and i'm very sure even my, some of my students are here today they are attending this webinar and uh, we all hope to have more of such sessions from you uh, bob sir whenever you're free <laughs> sure any time available thank you thank you very much